I have I have no words. Um so obviously we all or in the US especially obviously um I went to bed last night. I was excited. I was elated. I was confident. I was going to redo my table, uh, my prediction uh, table last night. Um, I decided I decided I wasn't going to. Um, I had seen the Harry Kane stuff. I, w- I was up late and I was like, well, let you know, I was going to make it, but I was like, let's, let's see what, let's see what happens. I don't know. You know, maybe, maybe I'll wait, you know, maybe I'll just throw in a caveat that this was before, you know, it finalizes. Obviously the window still hasn't closed, but, uh, it's getting there. And I was like, you know what, with Moises Caicedo going to Liverpool, I was going to put them as champs. I swear I was. I was like, this. that's all that was needed. I think that they'll have plenty of depth in midfield. They'll have legs. I think that they can cover the the back line that's maybe been suspect. But I think with the heavy press game, I think that that helps. You know, X, Y, Z, la, la, la. And then I woke up weirdly kind of early and I saw this shit I thought it was I thought it was a nightmare I thought I was living a nightmare and I think the craziest part too was that well first of all you don't want to be that angry in the morning um, and that's very unfortunate for me being a Premier League fan because if Liverpool loses and it's fucking 8 a.m., like, it, it ruins my day. Um, so when we when I woke up, it was just, I, like, I don't know. It's just, it's hard to say. Like, it was, it was like going through fucking grief. Like, I went through all stages. I, you know, I tried to rationalize it. I was like, um, I mean, maybe, you know, maybe, uh, maybe there's a misquote. I know it's Fabrizio, but maybe, uh, there's a mistake somewhere. And then I saw, and then I thought, fuck this dude. You know, I was like, fuck, I say it out. Eat shit like I was I was just fucking pissed I was furious and then I think right now I'm more in like acceptance um and obviously I know that that's not the seven stages I don't know I was jumping around in between all of them in between angry in between hope again that he'd come back in between uh pissed at him in between just looking for reports just scrambling and it's I understand how insane that is that like sports is just dictating our lives like this. I get that and I and I see that and, and I see it and I hear it and I see it and when I talk to my girlfriend about it, um I realize how stupid like it kind of looks and seems. I get that. But it's just it's everything, right? For us. And so again, when I saw, I, I'm just, like, even now still, I'm just trying to think, like, I, I'm just trying to look at all the different angles, you know? I'm trying to look at all the different angles of, like, you know, I, I've been calling, and this isn't, I swear this isn't, like, a recency bias type thing. I've been calling his representation um, kind of shady from the, from the from the jump, you know, even, I would say, like, for the last two windows where he gave these bizarre interviews um, where he was saying, I really appreciate, you know, everything's right and done, but, you know, I'm moving on. My time is done. And I was like, just genuinely, I was thinking like, like, who's telling him to do this? Or like, who thought that this was a good idea? 
like I would have thought even if the papers were all signed like for his transfer with the club and his personal terms and he had signed on the dotted line like even then it seemed kind of weird and sudden but he was doing it before any of that and he was just like I just want to thank Brighton he said bye to all of his teammates and then he had to finish out the rest of the season and it was just looking really really bad and he's just been wanting to move away from Brighton, which is, I guess, understandable. You know, you want, he wants to evolve. He wants to take the next step. You know, he feels like he's proven it. That's fine. And he's obviously a top talent. So, and listen, credit to him. Um, but he just keeps kind of making these, like, miss, uh, missteps, uh, in, in my in my opinion. And, um, and it just looks weird. And so... He does that, and then, you know, he's been just kind of mentally almost checked out, it seems like, Um, especially for the back half of that season. He's been gone, he's been gone, he's been saying, you know, just like, let me go, bye, deuces, I don't want to be here. So I did see a quote from DeSerby saying that, um, that he's forgotten about Caicedo. I watched the I watched where he says that, and it wasn't like a callous thing. It was just like you know he he wants to leave, and um, we have to keep going. So you know, so I I will like why am I why would I why would I be thinking about him if I have to kind of just move on? You know, like Postecoglou with Harry Kane. Um, so again, I I was looking at that angle. I thought you know. Or even the Caicedo angle of the player himself without representation. Like, wh- like, what does he want? What is he doing? He looks pretty ridiculous, I think. And, um, you know, but obviously somebody sold him on something. Uh, the point of view of Liverpool where they just make this giant step. How do you make this gigantic bid and you don't have terms agreed with the player? Or did they? I don't think they did. But I'm just saying, like from what, from everything that I've tried to see, and and most of the reports that I've seen, I don't think they did. Um, and then from the point of view of Chelsea, how do they just keep making these crazy signings? Uh, and Chelsea that they've been going after Caicedo for this large period of time. And now they were potentially going to miss out. Now they're not, but they don't want to up the value of their um, of their fee, the transfer fee. And they want to include players. Brian don't want players. Brian thought they were done yesterday, and we're just trying to like start fresh. As the fucking season starts today, they just wanted to start fresh. Liverpool wanted to have him in on Sunday. I mean, it's just been insane and then obviously the memes the clock pull the you know the rejection the the, just the whole bit he does want to say I think people want to jump the gun saying that yeah he's actually going to go to Liverpool people are saying his representation is um it's just really really bad I saw the Brighton CEO say that like you know he, he needs to be careful with his representation Yada, 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 yada. So it's just been a lot of talking, a lot of speculation. But this is easily, uh, this has been easily, sorry, one of the craziest windows that I ever remember. Um, Again, you have his drama, you have Mbappe drama, you have Harry Kane drama. I mean, we can drop videos on Harry Kane like every day. You know, we can drop videos on Caicedo even like a lot. Mbappe a lot like every day there's some new wrinkle there's some new thing and I get it's a high stakes game it's a high stakes game I think for everybody for for this team for that team for you know for the three teams involved for everybody um you know and I even saw the question of would uh Liverpool fans would they take him you know, if the Chelsea thing still, for some reason, didn't work out and the season's about to start and the window's about to close, would you still take Caicedo anyway? So there's just so many angles that you can look at it from that just one thing causes like an explosion of just rumors and stories and angles and, and everything. And so and just like trying to navigate that, we'll, 
we'll be doing that throughout. Um, but the, it's insane. I mean, it's absolutely insane for for him to again for for everybody in the U.S. waking up, and then obviously um, in England they they had known about it a little bit earlier. You know, we're able to get the the jump on it. But uh, here's the story, just in case. Again, exclusive to uh, Fabrizio. Moises Caicedo has just informed Liverpool that the uh, that he only wants to join Chelsea. Caicedo has decided to keep his word and only accept Chelsea as personal terms were agreed since the end of May. Chelsea set to bid again in order to get the deal done with Brighton. Um, and then there's the angle of, you know, Chelsea one up to Liverpool for Lavia. And then I think in the most unexpected turn of events then Liverpool won up Chelsea for Caicedo and it was just bombshell after bombshell after bombshell with this story and it just keeps going and it absolutely just keeps going and I saw Sky Sports as well kind of say kind of have something on on like the Lavia angle of it as well um yeah see here I've I've just been trying to keep track of all the (laughs) I'm just trying to keep track of all of like the drama that's been going on. Uh, Kai said it when he runs fast. Yeah, it clop on Sunday, apparently. Um, and here we go. Moises Caicedo advised by people close to him to cut ties with Manuel Sierra following his self-interest in the Liverpool-Chelsea transfer saga. Agent said to receive a substantial payout if the Ecuadorian ends up at Stamford Bridge. So, again, I don't know. You know, if that's like kind of, I would imagine so. Um, and I'm sure Chelsea would offer him higher wages, but I would imagine that the payoff for the agent is it must be how they're getting moves done and must be how, like a higher payoff, sorry, you know, to kind of entice that. But you don't, like, you got, as an agent, you should play a balance of like your self interest as well as, you know, your potential bonus on that and it doesn't seem like he's playing that right again that's just me that's just me um again i saw that yeah we've seen the hurricane stuff yeah woke up we're expecting yep 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 so i mean it's just and i was ready to relish the opportunity to just rub it in the faces of um of the Chelsea fans that were just kind of dogging us, one-upping us in every way, and then we went up them, and now they're back, and it it just hurts. It's, I don't, I have no idea what else do we say. It just hurts, man. And again, Brighton I think wanted to to be done with it, and now they can't, you know, because now Chelsea want to one-up it because Caicedo doesn't want to join again. More power to him. You shouldn't you shouldn't join a club you don't want to. At the same time, I don't want him at Liverpool if he's not if he doesn't want to be there. You know, it's like fuck him then. You know, because you're only gonna have more problems down the line. So it's like it's just a big big giant mess, and it's just caused an explosion. Really, I have no idea. Like what potentially could be going on but let me see i think there was something on sky yeah sports premier league as well where yeah they're just kind of recycling the same old stuff but at the same time not and then i don't know the premier league again is about to start i know the window's not about to close but you know there's that there's there's just so many angles that it's it's just gonna take us and we'll be looking at them all day but here's a a decent portion of it. The Lavia deal or potential deal was sort of taken a back seat. Now, a lot of people. Oh, also Tyler Adams. We had reported, not like we, I'm, look at me. Um, I had seen and it was reported that Tyler Adams was going to go to Chelsea. They activated his relegation clause, 20 million. That's been completely scrapped. Uh, he's not going to go. Um, I forget who was kind of going to go in for him now. I think it was Brighton that were potentially in for him. But now, again, Lavia, 
Like, where does he stand? He's completely fucked in this whole situation. Like, he's just in the middle of it. And it's just like, ah, you know, it just, it makes it, it's tough, man. And again, that I get it. That's part of the profession, but it sucks when your, your future is kind of just, you're looking at in the balance, you know, and you're, you're waiting for other others to kind of decide what's going to happen. People are speculating, you know, will one club get one player, will the other club get the other player? And the cynics were saying, as I was mentioning this on yesterday's show, is it a bit of a coincidence that Liverpool made all the running for Romeo Lavia and then Chelsea came in with a bid of £48 million after Liverpool had their £45 million bid rejected and then Chelsea were making all the running for Caicedo and then suddenly Liverpool go in with a British record £111 million fee. We think that both clubs are still interested in Romeo Lavia. I'm told by one source that potentially some sort of resolution could occur in the next 48 to 72 <laughs> hours. But there is still work to do because there is still no agreement with Southampton with any club for Romeo Lavia. There is lots of interest. Partic- and they've been hanging on to that 50 mil uh, price tag. So I think that they're just waiting again. If they And the other angle as well, even for Liverpool, is so you're telling me you had that 110 mil? Again, that does raise questions of... Who are we looking at? Who was Liverpool looking at? Thuram. Who was Liverpool looking at? Um, Bellingham. Who were they looking at? You know, there's just Cone. Who were they? Li- there were so many targets that we were kind of told it, they're too expensive. And I, I think a lot of Liverpool fans were, were pissed and weren't accepting that. And I think we're kind of pushing back a bit. But it was just kind of like it is what it is situation. And then they do this. So it's like every single fucking way, this this just throws everything in the face of it. Again, Chelsea are looking to break the British transfer record fee twice in the space of, what, six months, I think it said. Like, how are they allowed to do this? How are they allowed to keep getting... You can't keep getting away with it. Like, there's... I. It's too much, man. Honestly, it's too much. So again, we're just I'm just taking a look at that, taking a look at the situation, trying to see if there's anything else we can uncover. But waking up to uh Moises Caicedo not traveling to Liverpool for his medical, s- publicly stating that he wants to go to Chelsea, um, it just causes embarrassment for Liverpool. It emboldens Chelsea, which is, you know, that's that's fine. And then um, I think Brighton are just kind of put in the spot where they were just trying to be done. And I think maybe that that's what Chelsea are hoping for, is that Brighton are so over this situation that they're just like, can we just get rid of this guy? Like, okay, we'll take your, you know, whatever that final... Uh, that final price tag was. Um, And, you know, they might just be like, just, okay, let's just put an end to it. You know, if it's 90 or whatever they offered, <clears throat> plus plus incentives. If it's, you know, 85 or, yeah, again, whatever it was, like, it's just, they might have worn them down with Caicedo doing this. And we'll see, we'll see how their uh, resolve holds. Um, does this affect the, uh, agent at all, you know, because I think potentially he'd be burning some bridges, <laughs> Stanford bridge, he would be burning some bridges and, uh, you know, kind of killing some, um, some relationships that, you know, you want to be on the positive end, not, not the negative end, you know, again, those, those are all things to consider. I think, a lot of it as well is going to just end up being like, how does this end? Like, does it end with him going to Chelsea? Does it end with him going to Liverpool? Um, does Brighton just kind of cool it down? Does, you know, how, how does how does it land? And then we'll see the chips fall. Um, I think is going to be a big part of the situation. But Caicedo is undoubtedly a brilliant talent um but he's just 
I don't know. This is the age of bad PR negotiations. But I think the players, as long as the talent is there, you know, they're they're going to be fine. They're going to, you know, nobody's, I'm, I saw, I was looking at in the comments, whereas would you take him back? Or would you, would if you're a Liverpool fan, would you still take him? And a lot of the comments were mostly, yeah, you have to. And so, I mean, they're they're willing to get pied in the face and, you know, ask for seconds. Um, I don't know. I've, I've always been conflicted. I've always, you know, kind of thought, like, if he doesn't want to fucking come, then, you know, don't, don't, don't show up, you know. There, there's just too many there's just too many variables that the the public is never and will never be aware of um that again just over complicates it because oh my gosh anyway that over complicates it because it's like is the agent giving him bad advice is the agent only doing what Caicedo wants to do is he influencing him to want to you know and then the teams as well, you know, did they not go about it the right way? Uh, how much contact was there between Liverpool and Caicedo? How much contact was there? Apparently, Liverpool have a great relationship with Brighton. So, you know, I'm sure that helped that negotiation. And obviously, they paid what they were looking for. I don't know. There's a lot of variables that, again, I, I can't wait to see what some of the further fallout is. What is it? What does he do? What does he do? I mean, they're gonna play this weekend. What does he do? If he's still for, he's still on the team for Brighton, and you know, again, that that's another wrinkle that Brighton and Deserby already said. I've moved on. So he's already said he's moved on. So now it's like, does he play him? Does he suit up? Does he just kind of bite the bullet and still play him? Like I. Too many variables. Too many variables with this story. And it just kind of keeps keeps going. And it keeps um, trickling along. So we will be following it. Um, again, I'm still excited to watch um, Manchester City open up their title defense tonight or afternoon for me. And then tomorrow, you know, we'll, we'll be watching all the games or as many as we can. But... Keeping on that this this has been easily the craziest, like most infuriating slash best, you know, just objectively, like just the amount of content that the content gods are hand is is insane. I mean, it's insane. It is insane. I, there was even a situation with Harry Kane, like I said, that when I was um, I stayed up late last night, I saw something developing, and then it kind of just went away. But it was. <laughs> For a second, it was a little scary, and the ironic part it was I was like, "Oh my gosh, that is hilarious! Imagine that that happens," and then I wake up to this. Oh, it was it was mind boggling to say the least. It was crazy. So we'll see. I mean, I don't I don't even want to have an opinion yet if I would take him at Liverpool. Again, there, there's variables, but damn, dude. Like, f- for the most part, I trust Klopp and what he wants to do. I just, I was so excited. This was going to be such a game changer for Liverpool. This was, you know, we've kind of been bantered about our rebuild as two midfielders. And that's it, you know, so it's like, I, oh, I was so excited. I was so excited. And again, to wake up to this, it's just like I, I'm going through it, and I'm going through. Like I said, I'm going through the seven stages of grief, like every half hour. Like I'm just like in denial, uh, acceptance, <laughs> anger. You know what? I think the last one's acceptance. So I messed that up, but I'm just jumbling them all up. And every half hour, I'm going through. It. I'm just I can't. I'm addicted. I'm trying to see anything that I can. That will get me an update, and I don't. This is crazy. It's just crazy.